All right, we are back live. Uh, actually, not live. We are back recording. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still Hip Hop 95, the Islamist Street and Hip Hop Station. This is the podcast about nothing. Yes, sir. Tapping um, in, checking in. What's up, twins? I was going to say, what's up, Pop? What's poppin', twins? We are, uh, we are back. So, great show. Uh, we missed. We've been in and out of shows because it's playoff every other day schedule. We're trying to make sure the podcast coming out the day after makes sense and all of that. Right. Um, we're trying to line everything up so the Lakers and Warriors, because I know that's what y'all want to hear us talk about. We're trying to make sure everything lined up perfectly for that. So, sorry about the missed episodes. When the playoffs is back on the normal schedule, we'll be back on the normal schedule. But... <clears throat> As you always know, everything in the comments will be on YouTube. All of our socials are in the uh, bio. Um, yeah. YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Thank y'all for joining. Thank y'all for listening. Let's get straight into it. Man. Ain't even no, it, it, it's really no point of waiting because y'all know what we're here for. All right, so uh, <laughs> my dogs. Um, yeah. Warriors went down 3 1. They won last night to take a. 3-2, uh, I mean, for the Lakers to take a 3-2 advantage. They go back to L.A. tomorrow night, 10 o'clock ESPN. Simply, brother, <laughs> it's over. No, it's not. a dynasty over. No, 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 it's not over yet. It's not over yet. So this episode will be titled, Part of the Journey is the End. Yes, it is. Because this is the end for one of these teams. Yes, it is. And that is why this has been the most contested playoff series so far. And probably the most important one in context of the rest of the league, because yes. whoever wins the series is gonna win the championship. One hundred percent. And the worst part, the, it's kind of like the King series last series. Both teams can't advance; they just <laughs> both can't go. Man, <laughs> so it, it's been amazing to watch back and forth, uh, the adjustments that are made, adjustments that haven't been made. But to, it's, it's things that in our lifetime, especially with Steph Curry on the court, that are rules. Yes. Steph's not losing less than five, no. so that wasn't gonna happen last night. No. And they won twenty-seven straight road games in playoff series. I, I think they win game six. I said so. I think AD misses game six. They'll be back for game seven, but I think the Warriors win game six comfortably. And it sets up the end for somebody. <laughs> for somebody. For somebody in the month. Somebody. Man, I, and, and you know, time we talk about this Thompson flat circle. Yes. Somebody's big man. It's a three-one lead. Somebody big man go down, miss one game. Now you yep. gotta play. It. Must win game seven. Yep. I love to see how it ends this time, um, but no, no, it's not. It's not over yet. Let me ask: Do you feel differently? Because they said they. I don't know if mm -hmm. AD is not playing. The right. report came out today that he's good to go for tomorrow. I'm not listening to that report. No, I think he will be a game time decision, yeah. and he. They don't want anybody else to know that. Yeah. So. Knowing, assuming we're right on that, if he does, even if he does play, we're assuming he's not 100%. He hasn't really been 100% all players. He's been grabbing at the tip off players. Right. Do you, does that change anything if AD is on the worst part? So I don't think it changes too much just because the answer is there. And especially down 3 1, down 3 2, it's desperation time. We don't got to look for answers. We know the answer. If the Warriors are going to lose, it's going to be with Steph running high pick and roll with 80, 40, 50 times a game, getting him out the paint, getting him away from the rim. And even on nights, like both the games the Warriors have won, neither of them Steph have lit it up, really. Shot was off last night. Other game, he only had 20 points. So, you know, we're kind of due because those shots aren't going to keep missing. No. Okay, so as I did, I believe I did this last show, I will tell you my thoughts after each game quickly, and then we'll get into game six or seven. Right. <laughs> after game, because we haven't been here since game one, I believe. I yeah. think it was game one was the last game we were, um, we were here for. So game two, it was a blowout. I don't <laughs> – it's real funny to watch media's re reaction to a blowout in the playoffs because – it really doesn't matter. <laughs> right. But yeah. the media would act like, oh, my God. Like they the points like, carry over. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. How are you ever going to back? Bro, like the points carry over is perfect. It's done. They won the game. At yeah. the end of the day, it's one win. Yeah. And the Lakers blew them out in the game three. And I said, no surprise, your team is – your team has an incredible disadvantage foul-wise. Your best defensive player is in foul trouble all game. He can't figure out how to guard AD because everything, when they call one foul one way, he does it a different way. They call a foul again. So yeah, he doesn't. He was seeing the block charge was so funny. I was like, yo, what do you want him to do? He did, it, he did it two different ways <laughs> in the same quarter and got neither ball. Like, bro, and he, he said to the ref after, I think, the fourth or fifth foul, how do you want me to guard him? Yeah. Bro, I did it this way. I did it this way. So, after that game, I was like, bro, the energy was sucked out of the out of the team. You're on the road. All right. 
GG's. Two blowouts in a row. Then we get to game four, which was an incredible basketball game from start to finish. And that game was very, that game hurt you if you were a Warriors fan, and it gave you a lot of confidence if you were a Lakers fan. Because as a Warriors fan, they were in control of the entire game and collapsed the last six minutes. Yep. The Lakers were behind the entire game, and you got a spark from somebody you've been waiting to get a spark from. You've yep. been waiting for Lonnie Brown or Dennis or Austin to go crazy in the quarter, go crazy mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter, win you a game. Role players always win a game on the always win a game in the playoff series exactly. at home. It usually always happens. Yep. And you got the you got the game you wanted from Lonnie Walker. LeBron still looks okay. AD looks like he is disrupting everything, and it looks like all right. These guys can't, they can't beat us, like, no matter what. They just played the best game they possibly could have, other than Steph, Steph and Clay not shooting the ball incredibly well. Other than that, they look great. If you're the Lakers fan, you're saying that. On the Warriors fan, you're saying, well, every game we've been in control of. Game one, we was in control of. We kind of had a bad fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Game two, we blew you out. Game three, anomaly, whatever. Game four, we were in control of the whole game. We just collapsed in the six minutes. I blame mostly Steve mm-hmm. and a little bit of Steph because Steph – that high pick and roll has been working all game. I don't care what Steve is telling you. Yeah. Run the pick and roll. Keep bringing AD up. I just hate that he's a Christian, bro. Like, bro. He's such a good guy, bro. <laughs> like, so respectful. <laughs> so respectful. <laughs> so respectful. <laughs> and then we come into game five. And as you said, Steph isn't losing the series of five. Never been slept. Never lost a series of five games. I had no doubt they were winning the game tomorrow. And here is where I was yesterday. So if you're looking at the series and you're saying, how do you want a – you want to look at a game and you want to say, how do you want this team to win? If you're crazy. I'm crazy. So <laughs> you're saying, how do you want your team to win? And if you win a close game with them, you don't come out of that super confident. Especially if they come in and dominate the game and it takes a heroic step for the play right. for a quarter or something like that. Yeah. And you barely pull out the game. And it's like, man, if we was on the roll, we'd probably go win that game. The second way is a blowout. And this is really important in that because you don't want LeBron and AD not have to play for it. A blowout would have had them playing 30 minutes, 28 minutes, and they on the bench for the rest of the fourth nice. quarter. So even if you would have felt confidence in a blowout, you haven't seen them under pressure. You didn't have to deal with them coming back. You right. didn't have to deal with to the stop the run. Yes, right. you didn't have to deal with all of that. That's been hurting you this whole series. How I wanted them to win this game was exactly how they won the game yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I said I want them to control the tempo, control the – Draymond, shout out to you. We'll get there in a second. But yeah. – I wanted them to control the tempo and control the game. They, after that first quarter, the, they got off to an incredible start and let, let, um, let the Lakers come back. And after about the four-minute mark in halftime, it was Warriors in control the rest of the yep. way. They kept the league. I think the closest they got the rest of the game was nine. Mm-hmm. So that is how I said I want them to go in the fourth quarter up about 12 and keep the league so I can sh- they show they can keep the league. Right. And that just gives you a confidence because it feels like, bro, if we on our A game, we do what we – Play how we're supposed to play. They can't beat. Yeah, stopping the runs was super important. Super important because they weren't able to do that, and also being able to start your runs because a lot of a big issue in Game Four was Wiggins wide open, clank, 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 wide open, clank. Steph open for three, clank, and it's like the threes that usually like Mm -hmm. put a fork in them or put a knife in your chest, they missed. And Game Four they made them all. Excellent game from Wiggins. Excellent game from Draymond. So saying all of that to say. I'm very confident going into tomorrow. I was confident regardless. Mm-hmm. But after Bron's weakening his foot and AD being in, being concussed yeah. or whatever he is, yeah. I if you're a Warriors fan, you should have a lot of confidence. If you're a Lakers fan, you should have a lot of confidence as well. They're seven oh in the playoffs, haven't even come they have not lost a home game um in the playoffs. Yeah. Warriors, like you said, have won twenty twenty seven straight series with a road win. So Something's got to give tomorrow. <laughs> Something's got to give tomorrow. So especially, so I definitely 1,000% agree with on how you want to win a game, per se. Some real nerd shit. It's like yeah. super crazy shit. And, and, and this is like, it's the, it's the pull another layer deep. Like, man, is Steve, like, keeping it close to keep broad? I mean, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but somehow it, kept, it stayed 9, mm-hmm. 10, 11, so broad stayed in. But you kind of started to see the cracks in what the game plan was for the Lakers in a way that regular basketball fans really won't understand. Because game one, it's very easy off the four days rest where you've been watching the film. It's like, yo, I'm going to take step 48 feet for real. I'm going to be in his chest. 
You know, Jerry, listen, go watch go watch game one. Everybody at home. Jerry better go right there on the inbounds, not letting them bring it up. Cool. Run around all game one with them. Run around all game two. You get to game four, Austin Reeves. Listen, you get to game four. I forget who got to rebound. Was it D'Lo? It was late fourth quarter. D'Lo look up on the fast break. It's no Lakers on the side of the court. It's no, it looked like a rec game. And like, everybody on the side exhausted, bro. Because it's it sounds easier than it really is. And the problem is, even with AD healthy, if they are going to work AD like that on defense, he's not going to have the energy for the offense. And that's what people don't understand is, like, it's not always AD's not aggressive or they're not calling plays. Okay. <laughs> it's not that AD's not always aggressive or they're just not calling the plays for him. It's, bro, we've gone four, five, six possessions without a stop. Mm-hmm. Draymond is pushing me 20 feet from the rim. All right, let me just catch it here. Yeah. Let me not Let me not get 16, yes. 14. Let me just catch it here. You know, like, mm-hmm. just throw the ball. And, man, you know, I... I want to believe it's nothing. I really do. I want to believe it's a slump, but something wrong with Braun Jumper, and you not going to fool me. I see it. I right, listen, you can throw a couple in the second quarter, didn't make a single one after. It's something wrong right there. And for lower leg injuries, it does hurt your jumper. And that's what people don't understand. Glass Westbrook, LeBron's foot is hurting. That means the, energy, the, the way he shot a basketball for 20 years, he may not be able to do. So now you're asking AD off the concussion to be your best player in LA in a must win game six. It's really a lot to ask. So it's a lot to ask. So <clears throat> uh we'll, we'll I wanna start with LeBron foot real quick because you brought up a super point about his a super good point about his jumper and I that's exactly where I was going was I see a lot of people talking about his shot percentage in playoffs. It's atrocious from three. Yep. It is that because, like you said, he's not comfortable. Like he's not comfortable. You can tell. That's why his like his layups. He's missing a lot of layups. He usually makes. And I'm not. Even, I've been saying all year. Braun has lost a step, and not a negative way. Again, yeah. like he's still better than a lot of people. The step he's lost is a step some people never even got to. He's <laughs> like six steps ahead of a lot. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. But he's not 2012, 2014, 2015. That's all I'm saying. I've been saying that all year. But if you go back and watch his early season highlights. He looks way, he's way more quick, he's way quicker, and he's way more explosive. Right. After that foot injury, all of that came down. All of it, his whole game slowed down. And I think that's part of why you haven't seen him on ball a lot. Right. I do think it's part of the offense to let D'Lo and Austin run the offense because it saved a lot of energy for him. Right. But I do think a lot of it is his foot, and he knows if he's really, because they, if you were paying attention um, to the audience, if you guys were paying uh, super close attention, every time, Braun was trying to bring the ball to the court. Wiggins was pressuring him 94 feet because they know, like, he doesn't want to dribble like right. that. His foot is bothering him. So you see a lot of his moves are catching shoots or I'm making one move and I'm going. He hasn't been doing a lot of dribble moves. Nope. And he's in the post a lot. When he does go to the hole, it's not a bunch of people. It's not crowded. So he is being very cautious of that, and it is affecting him. And I think that tweak last night hurt really bad. Oh, yeah. If you – that last three – Steph hit in the corner where he pushed him – he walked to that closeout. Mm-hmm. Steph spread it to the corner, and he looked at him and just like kind of like hobbled over. There. Yeah. And he got the put back dunk, so that gave me a little bit of confidence that he'll be he'll be okay. But he's I don't think he's anywhere close to 100. The, the one and that's going to affect the him. one in transition where he stepped. Well, it looked like he might have stepped on Luke's mm-hmm. foot, but or when I forget who it was, even that layup, he, his hand barely got to the rim. Yes. And for LeBron, that's un, like, that's a hurt of him. Yeah. Um, it, it's hard to see. It, I'm glad you talked about Wiggins um, pressure, pressing him because another reason they're doing that is because of the foot. Mm-hmm. Because they know if he gets by Wiggins, he's not going to put someone in the rim. Mm-hmm. So that threat of him end to end is not there for the Lakers. And it's really hurting their fast break points. And you see that with AD making up for that, trying to get out, trying to run where if LeBron isn't pushing the pace, or unless Dennis Schroeder's in the game, you have no fast break presence at all on that team. And it's really hurt in their offense these last couple of games. And, and that is important to watch because if you're watching, if you're watching game one and two, 
which I'm hoping if you're watching this, you were watching game one too. <laughs> you would see the Lakers were trying to run. They weren't trying to run all game, but when they had numbers, they wanted to get down the court. Yeah. That has stopped these past two games for the most part. Yeah. A lot of that has to do with AD and Braun having to guard. You said it. You said it early in the season, and I've been watching it all season. Like, I got to give credit uh, to Ish when you get back on the show. You said they're going to start bringing Braun up in the pick and roll. And it's not for Steph to ISO him and, like, Fuck you, Brown. Better. Yeah, it's right. not for that. It's just to make him guard. Because yeah. if you just let him sit in the corner on Mooney, or let him guard a back screen and just switch to the corner, yeah. you're not making him exert energy. So now they're starting to bring Braun and AD up on the exactly. pick and roll, so it exerts energy. I now do want to get to AD in the pick and roll. So <laughs> Steph is a the Steph isn't a point guard thing is some of the funniest shit I have yeah, ever heard in my life. Crazy. Um. Watching this series, I'm glad that narrative has been put to bed. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of after you reach where Braun and Steph are, like, that's kind of how you're doing it. Or just put narrative to bed. Exactly. Um, so watching him really play point guard and right. carve a defense up yeah. has been beautiful to watch. Because yeah. you know that's my favorite position to watch a real traditional point guard. That's my right. favorite thing to see. Or like a Devin Booker type player. So, yeah, shout out to you, Booker. Yeah, right there in a second, too. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> clicking. but with Steph running that pick and roll, at 80, 40 times, like you just said, bro, it is causing him to exert so much energy. So in the first half, you keep hearing the commentary saying, where is AD going in the second half? Because Stan Van Gundy yesterday uh, said yesterday, well, yeah, he's playing great right now, but that's not really important. He's been great in the first half. It's what does what does he do the second half? Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of the reason why AD has been kind of bad in the second half offensively is because of how much pressure they're putting on him defensively. Yeah. And he, to his credit, he is still great where he's supposed to be. Yeah. Like, you're not supposed to be able to guard Steph on the ice, though. Like, uh, he's, Steph, still, he's still amazing. Exactly. Amazing. Exactly. <laughs> Steph hitting the side step 27-foot three, you will live with that. Uh, make him hit that shot seven times. So he's doing a good job of right. guarding the pick and roll himself. It's the backside of the defense that's killing him. Yeah. And that is why... You kind of got to pick your poison, and that's how you, why you're saying they found the answers. I wanted to get to that point. They found the answer. The answer is just run the pick and roll. It doesn't matter what they do. If they switch, yeah. all right, now we got a mismatch. If they trap Steph, right. all right, now we got a four or three, our bread and butter, what we want them to do. Right. So it is putting the Lakers at an extreme disadvantage having AD in that pick and roll so many times with his body breaking down slowly, the series getting longer. So I think, like you said, they have the answers, and you will see a pick and roll from start to finish of this game. It's desperation right. time. So, um, man, what was it like? I think it might have been the beginning of group, the first round series. Mm -hmm. We talked about the differences in superstar players, and I was like, man, Steph provides answers that other players just cannot get to. Yes. So what they did, bringing AD up on the pick and roll, changes the entire game for a couple reasons. First... Everybody's like, man, the Warriors went small and still out-rebounded the Lakers. Why? Well, think about it. Anthony Davis is 30 feet from the hoop. So even if we come off this screen and I don't like this shot, or we come off this screen and Steph doesn't have the look he wants, the Lakers have no other big men on the court. It's LeBron, Rui, like Austin Reeves, it's regular guys back there. So you saw that a lot, especially last game. AD is a top fighter for his life, and Steph throw a bounce pass to Draymond Lane. Because like, there's nobody else else on that back line. You're asking him to do so much the entire game. It's really hard for them to sustain that, on, especially on offense, because their offense is already stagnant. Yes. You see players that could play versus other teams that just can't be on the court right now, like Jared Vanderbilt, the public defender. Won't see a lot of game, Won't see a lot of minutes next two games. I promise y'all. He won't not. be on the court. He will not because he, he's just not out there to be a scoring option. It's the Davion Mitchell thing. Same Literally. thing. Exactly. Same exact thing. Yep. And we talked about the Lakers before this before this series before the playoffs. We said they don't have a five where I can get defense, shooting, playmaking, and a solid like like all that together. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're seeing in this series where. You know, if we put, if, that, if the Warriors play like they did game one and two, we're gonna keep Steph off the ball. We're gonna run around. They are able to that they welcome that style because man, we can sit AD and Braun on the blocks. They don't gotta run. They don't gotta chase. 
no, no, no. These last two memes, we're bringing both of you guys up. So now Dennis Schroeder, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimara, y'all got to play defense because the real action is happening behind you now. Mm -hmm. Where y'all are the last line of defense. And everybody's like, man, how did Draymond get 20? That's why. Because I've been playing with Andy Davis for a year and a half. I'm not contesting the layups. I'm playing with AD. But all of a sudden, AD, for the first time and the only time for any team you'll ever play <laughs> while you're in the NBA, <laughs> is 30 feet from the hoop every single play. And it's not his fault because that's just his job. Exactly. So the it's – I'm really glad Steph was able to play point guard this series. Man, this it, it's, <laughs> I just Steph Curry, man. It's, I found myself screaming at the screen. You know, you scream at the screen. You're like, bro, especially what's game four. Oh, my God. Click. Listen, Clay took Ooh. that second shot. Listen, that second shot. I really what? was like, man. So, okay, see, 2016. <laughs> like, you really got to breathe. They wouldn't be here with <laughs> Dog, I was like, yo, it's no way you just did that, bro. It's like, it's no way you but, just did that. But, and this is why I'm going to shoot him some bail, because you mentioned him earlier, and I'm going to get my Steve Kerr shit off. Even worse than watching Clay shoot that shit, this nigga Mo Smoothie, 30 feet from the hoop, no dribble, just standing there, like, looking for somebody to pass it to. I'm like, Steve, call timeout. Steve, call timeout. Steve on the side, I'm like, damn, what are you gonna do? Like, oh shit, who are you gonna pass it to? Like, Steve, please, bro. Like, he's 35 feet from the hoop, bro. It's like, bro, just call a timeout. Ended up with Clay taking a 35 footer, but. Back to back 30. Just, just terrible execution. The last four and a half minutes or five minutes of that game, they had six points in four times. I'm telling you, bro, terrible I, would, execution. I, I, I wish I had, like, we had a big stat department because I just know the Warriors still lead the playoffs in each of us. I've never seen some shit like that. I've never. It'd be a one-point game. Jordan pulled up on yesterday. I said, you got to be fucking kidding me. No, you got to be fucking playing with me, all, dog. You know he finished from three? <laughs> one for six. <laughs> And you know what's crazy? He hit one and then threw up a heat check. That's what I'm talking about. You're not even warm yet. You're not even warm yet. Nigga, like, go get you one more, bro. Like, if you hit two in a row and you want to, because Steph did that. Steph scored seven straight, and then he lost like a 30-foot well, hole. He lost that Yeah. Deep. deep. Yeah, listen, you score seven straight, you know, a couple of middies, mm -hmm. cool. Yo, Clay Thompson and Jordan Poole hit a spot-up jumper, like a wide-open jumper. Next play is from 30. Like, bro. <laughs> Calm down. So, <laughs> I... Real quick, game five. Yeah. Last night, Draymond Green, player of the game. Um, Steph can always be player of the game, but Draymond Green last night. Shout, shout, out, shout out to Draymond for that, maybe. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but um, the the intensity he came out and played with on both end gives gives the Warriors energy. Roby Ro Ro texted me last night and said, um, how do you feel about, like, in the second quarter, I was like, how do you feel about Draymond uh, attacking and scoring like this? And I said, honestly, usually it backfires in the fourth quarter because he'll throw us some stupid shit or shoot a three he shouldn't have because he's been on all game. But I said, it's bringing the energy to the team, and that's what his scoring usually does. So his, uh, his aggression changed everything last right. night. And my fear is that they're going to get away from what won them that game. Right. And that is my fear. Playoff, it just happens in the playoffs. Like you'll just yeah. see a team win a game one way and they'll just get they'll just go away from it. My my basketball knowledge is telling me they're not gonna do that. They're a veteran team. Right. They watch the film, Draymond attacking work, Steph in the pick and roll work, that's all you'll pretty much see next game, yeah. and we'll try to find Clay's shot. Um but Draymond, we talked about in the before the series started how important the pace of the series was going to be. And if you have been watching that, like we said, you have noticed nobody has been able to really control the place yeah. until last night. Mm -hmm. um, except for the blowouts. But yeah. um, in the close games, it's kind of been like whoever's on the run is controlling the pace, exactly. which is how a lot of basketball games go when you don't have um, like real point guards on the right. But last game, you saw Draymond took that response. Draymond Steph took that responsibility. We're going to push this pace. If you watched that game last night, you will see, or just watch the highlights from last night, you will see a lot of the times – AD, last person in the screen. Yeah. Every single time down the court, last person in the mm -hmm. screen. He's so good defensively, he can get down there late, make up, rotate on the block. Yeah. But he's the last person in the screen a lot of the times because of that pace. And I think the Warriors stick with that. Last, Lastly, last series we talked about 
how important on the road it is to not let the crowd really bring the energy. Yeah. And I think the Warriors will do that. That is why they have won so many world games is because the three-pointers, yeah. the, the three-point downs really sit you down. So I do think this is one of those games, like you said, um, the Warriors control the whole thing. But the what Lakers are up 3 So they're doing something right. Yeah. And I want to ask you, what have you seen from the Lakers that does give you any confidence that they can win the series? And like you said, whoever wins the series, I 100% agree with They're right. winning championship. Mm-hmm. Why do you feel that way about the Lakers? So what I've seen from the Lakers on defense confirms what we kind of saw post-trade deadline. Yes, so we thought, okay, this might be the best defense in the league. <laughs> and, like, this, and this might be like one of the best defenses, like maybe. Yeah, like, <laughs> where it's – oh, Oh, I'm not even like, if they had Prom Bond on this Prom Bond on this team, oh, yeah, it's it a real conversation bro. for real. They're missing listen, if they had one one guard defender, mm-hmm. they literally had if they had Westbrook. <laughs> or if they, any guard defender, they'd be they I think they'd be I think the series would be over because even just look at the Warriors. So the Warriors are a great litmus test because they play so many different ways. Yes. It tests how many different ways you can stop somebody. Mm-hmm. And for the Warriors to have to get to this ex- extreme of it's got to be Steph. It's got to be pick and roll. Can't nobody really else touch it. We run a six, seven man rotations. Like, that is impressive on itself because the first two games, the Warriors looked lost. They did. Steve Kerr looked confused they did. because Anthony Davis really is top two, top three defenders of this era. Like, and he's having Easy. one of his best postseasons defensively. I think what gives you confidence, I guess, as a Lakers fan, especially, is because. A lot of those shots they miss. It's just he sat and missed that night because he's gay. Because he's getting those shots, he's going to you know. The only hope that you have as for the Lakers is I just need one from Bron. Yes, Bron hasn't had a thirty point game this postseason. Mm-hmm. This I, postseason yet? Not one. Oh, that's crazy. I just need one because because you know, listen, you get me past Golden State, AD can take care of Jokic. Yeah, for I, sure. Sure. I just need to listen. You just need. I just need one classic Braun game for real, and you can skate your way to another finals. Yes. And it's nobody on that team. Listen, love Andrew against the death. Not strong enough. No. You saw it. Middle of game. Middle of game five. Three people in the lane with him. He just went up anyway. <laughs> yeah. He just, he just went up anyway. Fuck it. Like. So I think the 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 combination of AD and Braun being two of the three best players on the court is what would give me confidence as a Lakers fan. And I'm going back home. Let's just get one more at home. Yes. We're a free throw shooting team. You know, without free throws, our offense got to stall. So yes. both the games we lost, we just didn't shoot 34, 50 million free throws, mm-hmm. which is which is a topic on itself. Well, we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> but that, that would give me that would give me excitement going back home. Okay. So I, I want to start this by giving a lot of credit to Oh, Brian. I, I almost forgot. And the Warriors are the worst road team in the league, apparently. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so, um, I want to start off getting credit to Braun first. Mm-hmm. Because LeBron went from the best player ever mm-hmm. to this playoffs and a weak power forward. Yeah. And, like, it was a seamless transition. Mm-hmm. A point power forward type, type right, position. Yeah. And he has done it seamlessly. He has, you've seen a lot of these games, he's shot under 50%, which is very rare for him. Mm-hmm. And that just is his foot and his jumper not being right. able to fall. But everything else you need Braun to do, you're, he is doing. Like, I don't know if this is just like was taught to him how to close out or if he is just a, the athlete in him. Mm-hmm. But the way he closes out on three-point okay. shooters oh, yeah. is something I have never – the only person I see that does it that well is Drew Holiday. Yeah. But Drew Holiday is in 6'8 and 250, and right. so you can kind of get by Drew Holiday. But mm-hmm. LeBron has stopped the Warriors from taking so many threes mm-hmm. because of how fast he can close out yeah. and how fast he can recover. We talked about – we bring it up all the time, the 2013 Heat. Half the defense was LeBron being able to cover the core and get back and just yeah. the shot. Right. Um, and he is he can't do it to the extent now, but AD is behind him most times. Right. So he is able to kind of freely roam, and he is such a genius, bro. He is disrupting a lot of this offense, yeah. and he has. That's why the motion offense hasn't worked, Literally. because he was just yelling out everything, like, yo, go here, go here. Mm-hmm. And the only thing reason it was working in game one, we, got, we hit 21 threes that game, was because 
Um, they were shooting the gap, which is just not how you do that with them. Yeah, they're trying, to, they're trying to cheat. Yeah, they're, they're trying, trying to cheat, cheat, yeah. the, uh, cheat the system, and you yeah. can't do that with the Warriors. So as soon as they stopped that, the motion was dead. It was right. dead just like that because of how good. It has a lot to do with AD being on the backside, yeah. but because of LeBron. You should have like, seen my face when I saw him pick the ball to Steph Curry. Bro, oh my. I said, no way you're calling the hammer play again. No way. That's not what. Okay, so, so let me get this off real quick. Let me get this off real quick. Because I saw the Bleacher Report, like, oh, my God, LeBron will remember that play. First of all, that's not their play. That's not the Warriors' play. That is the Spurs' play that we ran for 20 years. That is not new. It's not so, oh, yeah, he knows from the Warriors' violence. No, bro. They ran that play 30 times in game winning situations, bro. See, please, bro. Pick another play. Bro, my thing is, the Spurs, we started running that play because we didn't have Steph Curry. <laughs> we were down three. <laughs> Don't overthink this, bro. Uh, what was it game? It might have been game four, game five, I think, where they lost. Steph had two isos on AD top of the key, couldn't okay, score it. Cool, I'm fine losing that way. Don't you fucking faith the ball to Steph Curry so Draymond can put it on the ground twice and throw a pass to the corner. Like, why is he driving to the rim and you're down three? Nobody's gonna follow him, bro. I'm not gonna to hit that shit. No. I'm glad you said all of that because <laughs> my last point on that is, like, <laughs> why? That's it. <laughs> Just why? I would no, no joke. I'd rather y'all get out the ball than four niggas stand around Steph Curry. Yo, yo, just just four niggas just get around him and let him get one up, bro. bro like Clay was Clay was three of like twelve from three. What are you running a play for him for, bro? Just get the ball in Steph's hand and let him shoot a thirty foot three point and live with the results. Right. Okay, serious. Back to Braun. Yeah, like. Um, his transition from power from where who he is to power forward has been amazing. His defense has been amazing, and his his three point shooting has been atrocious, but very similar to 2016. Draymond, everyone that mattered, he is hit. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Like, and I'm not even talking about like to go and run. I'm talking about to stop the Warriors run yeah. or to stop him from going run. I think it was game one or two. Uh, it was game one. The Warriors were about to go up ten. Uh, the Warriors were up seven. They were uh, had them. No, they were up ten, and they had the momentum. They was about to get a stop. Braun pulls down to seven. Comes yeah. back down, slows it down, gets a bucket. Five point game, That's just like that. It's simple shit like that. Mm -hmm. That yeah, I can't control the game all game no more. My foot hurt a lot, but these timely moments, these. Right. That's why you see him closing quarters. That's why you see him close every single quarter because yeah. he knows how important it is, and that that team is just. Completely different him on the court. Right. That's my first point. Second point, we said for this for them to win the series, AD had to be the best player. He has been that some nights. Yep. And he has been without a doubt the Lakers' best player. He has been amazing. Right. Even the two games that he's been kind of mediocre on offense, his defense makes up for that. Like okay. you said, he's after Draymond, he's the second best defender of this generation. If you put him in front of Draymond, I'm not having no rights. Like he is amazing on defense. And that is why they have made this series so hard on the Warriors is because the Warriors, the one thing they've had to, never had to really worry about is how we want to score the ball. Right. Like the motion offense has worked. All right, Steph, go pick a roll. They're really having to think, like, how do we get these people involved? And then the fucking genius coach, don't know if it was Braun or Darvin Ham idea. Sorry, Darvin Ham, but Braun is Braun, so we got to have to yeah, ask the question. <laughs> but they put, Andrew, they put AD on Andrew Wiggins. It was like, bro, they keep bringing Draymond, Draymond the brand up on the pick and roll, and they put AD on Andrew Wiggins, and it fucked the Warriors the last of game four because they don't run the pick and roll with Steph. They don't run the pick and roll with Steph and Andrew. And, and I was like, bro, that is genius. And his ability just yeah. to go, like, all right, fuck it, I'm going to go guard the three. Yeah. Like, that's just amazing. That shit made me so mad. I'm looking at you, bro. Think you don't tell Andrew to go set the screen, bro? I don't know why they did it. I don't know why they did it. It's so frustrating, bro, because you see the Lakers. It, it, okay, this, this is basketball nerd shit. Where they're trying to get Steph in these pick and rolls, mm -hmm. get Steph on Braun, get you know, get him on the right block, isolated. But there's some possessions. I think definitely last game where it looks like Braun is just standing there. No, every time someone comes up the screen to screen, they scram Steph onto someone else. Mm -hmm. So instead of Rui, he's on Austin. Instead of Austin, mm -hmm. he's on Schroeder. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all need to be doing, bro. Just whoever that nigga is on, come on, set the screen, bro. Come, we'll figure it out after, bro. Mm -hmm. You may not have to be short, short roll Draymond, but you got to set this screen, bro. Yes. We need to run this yes. action. And, you know, having Braun and AD both come up was such a great adjustment because now they have to focus on what's up here. Yes. Everybody else isn't going to have that benefit of, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Braun's on the back end. Braun can mm -hmm. tell, you know, AD's back there. He erases everything. So, uh, and the. 
This brings into the point about them not have Jared Vanderbilt not being able to play and the lack of wing defenders they have. You see, as soon as AD is out of the paint, it's a lay. It's a lay. We they have out the Warriors have outscored the Lakers in in the paint in every game except for game one. Yep. But that's how you get foul call. Um, so <laughs> Yo, were so mad at me last night, bro. I was in the Bills, I was in the PlayStation party. Like, man, they're not calling them. I said, yeah, y'all should try one. <laughs> you just dropped the basket. That's all y'all said. That's the only place niggas get fouled at the rim, right? There's never been a foul outside the paint. So just drive and replay, right? Duh, they had a thirty plus free throw advantage, yeah. and they said y'all shot hella three. Man, Dennis Schroeder flopped forty feet from the hoop. It was like, yeah, y'all should drive. One. You got fouled at half court. What do you mean? Like, oh my god. Yeah. But uh, the into the yeah, that's where I was going. So the Warriors not running that Stephen and Andrew pick and roll was because it is not comfortable. Yeah, and so that is the job right. in the playoffs is to make a team yeah. uncomfortable. It's like, yeah, I know that's a solution, right. but are they going to do it when they make no? And it clearly fucked. It clearly fucked with Wiggins. Yes, because Wiggins was like, <laughs> he was like, why am I so open? <laughs> and man, he missed the first one. Mm-hmm. Really gotta hit this yeah. next. The next one, yeah. It's like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we've been too hard on Trey for real. This was hard shot, for real. But I will, I will say the Lakers' job is. I don't really think it has anything to do with them offensively. Like I think the Warriors are who they were. These, they, when they defend without fouling, they're good defensively. Offense, yeah. they're gonna score. They have LeBron and Austin Reeves. They're role players. They get a game from a role player every game. Last night it was Austin Reeves. They didn't win, but Austin Reeves played great last yeah. night. Game before it was Lonnie Walker. I hate Austin Reeves. Um, I want that on record. I don't like Austin Reeves or Dennis Schroeder. I do not like how they play basketball. Dennis, Dennis Schroeder is so annoying, bro. Like it's extremely annoying. But Austin Reeves, I think Austin Reeves bad for the game. Buster, he, he's hit that point for me. He bad for the game, bro. Bro, like, why do you think you were James Hunter? Like, bro, just like you, like, especially last night. Out. Especially last night, you down on twenty, bro. You can, you can chill, bro. Chill, bro. <laughs> you're down on twenty, fam. You don't got to flop right here, dude. He, he trying to prove a point to Clay Thompson so bad, and Clay Thompson, was like, Clay Thompson, that block. Listen, there was a lot on that block, bro. <laughs> and he, because he got the and one on him, and he yeah. played it not like the <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but. but but yeah, so that's my point in the Lakers is just defensively yeah. they have made the Warriors so uncomfortable. I said five minutes ago, seven minutes ago, that I am looking for Draymond to score. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> like I'm, I'm hoping like right. if Draymond doesn't come out aggressive tomorrow, I'm like, oh god, we might not win this game so, so, if Draymond don't score 14 so, points. So, like, so hear me out, <laughs> because listen, I'm always crazy. So I'm right. Game one, game two, and he's like, oh my god, you're my brain. I'm like, man, listen, that's not what the Warriors need. The Warriors need to find a way to put pressure back on the rim. Steve's answer to that was, we're going to bring AD up. And they saw, okay, without AD in the paint, without burning the paint, shit, Draymond could get down. So don't be surprised. You see him. Mid-second quarter when double zero get off that bench. Sir. Because I have been waiting for five games to see the lineup where maybe AD sits down. If AD does what? Maybe AD sits down. Or, you know, when Gabriel's in the game, where you trust him on defense, where he's not going to have to guard a superstar. Yes. Where, okay, he takes off from the dash on somebody. Because mm-hmm. there's no rim protection without AD there. Yes. So, ho- hopefully that. Shout out to Jermichael Green for being ready. But shout out to Steve Kerr for stopping playing that nigga, too. Yeah, exactly. Just no one. All right, that's it. Don't get no tech. Listen, don't get no tech on the You got us again. You're Jermichael Green. You are Jermichael Green. You're Jermichael Green, nigga. Don't you dare. And don't post LeBron. Don't post LeBron and put capital. Nigga, you ain't Michael so, Green. So I don't care if LeBron was, Ryan. He was. But you don't get to tell him that. <laughs> it's an all-time lie. Like, all time. But it's Braun. And, and he's second to LeBron. Like, bro, why are you writing checks? Like, shit, Steph got to catch these checks. You ain't going to play right? tomorrow. Yo, like, you're, like, you're not playing. Steph got to deal with that. You don't got to deal with that. Bro. <laughs> and, you know, relax on Jordan Poole, y'all. Let's, let's, let's. Let's take this Jordan That's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, let's let's really take this into perspective. Mm-hmm. Because if I just came off an amazing postseason, an amazing season in general, came off the bench, played great. Y'all needed me to start in the playoffs, played great. I had a bunch of big shots in the finals. Yeah. And the next playoff, something's just not right. Yeah, we, we don't know what it is. We just something must have happened, right? Early in the year, maybe in front of millions and millions of people. Like, just, like, it's it's uncomfortable, bro. He got punched in his face in front of the world, for real. I would be uncomfortable there, too, bro. And what the Warriors have asked him to do is not an easy job. 
And the same defense that Steph has shot shit versus and that we're asking Draymond to be aggressive, he's playing too. But you're asking him to be Steph Curry in those minutes. That's a lot to be, bro. That's, like, this isn't a Jordan Poole series, and that's why. That's okay, bro. He's 22. But I said that last year. He's 22. But this is why I really, but, well, for at least for Jordan Poole, I really hope they win this series. Because as much as this wasn't a Jordan Poole series, whoever they play next would be. Yes. Because against any other team, he's super valuable. So valuable. But he just can't do this because, hey, Andy Davis one of the best defenders ever. But the shots he can get yep. and that he gets very easily, he can't take. I, I would like to see him do exactly what he did last night, which was go to the mid-range. Yep. But something that I noticed, <clears throat> also noticed last night is now he's second-guessing himself. He had a wide-open floater and was looking to pass. Yeah. And that comes from being uncomfortable, not being sure of yourself being in the shooting game. Getting benched. Getting benched. Yeah. You only played 10 minutes in game four. So I think it's really important for Steve to, and I know they are, keeping his confidence up, like, yeah. bro, play your game. It's cool. We good. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you've seen him more than 20 minutes tomorrow. But a lot of the reason that is is because they attack him every single time oh, yeah. he's on the court. Yeah. And it's not, it doesn't stop. Every single time he's on the court, he gets attacked. And you can you just can't have that. Okay, it, it, this is where I'll stop defending that nigga. That defense is It's just, terrible. It's it's off. It's lazy. That's it's, it, yeah, that's it's the lazy. worst part. That's the it's lazy, bro. Yes. Like even la- even game five where not, game five where they're not calling fouls. You're still fouling those things. Like I still see that. that. That's lazy, bro. You're putting yourself in bad situations and you're a level of athlete where you don't have to do you that. Have to do that Dennis that. Schroeder is fast as shit. One of the fastest players in the league. You're faster than Dennis Schroeder. You're faster than Austin Reed. Y'all are the same size, bro. Listen. You, at some point, bro, pride got to kick in for real. Mm-hmm. And, and you want these minutes, bro, bro, you got to defend. You got to, bro. You got to defend, bro. You can't get away with it. It's not Boston, bro. It's no Marcus Smart, Derek White on that other team, bro. And if they are, they're not playing 30, 40 minutes. And if they are, they don't have LeBron telling him, hey, go hunt this out. I'm switching this every single play. Literally. They don't have nobody to do that. If you watch the game four, Part of the reason they came back was because they said, we're going to make Steph Curry guard LeBron every – they ran that Steph. Yep. Whenever Steph was guarding Nate, LeBron brought him up on the pick and roll, and it wasn't always to score. It was just to get a match. Right. And they ran it for six straight yes, minutes. And that's what frustrates me about the Warriors, and that's what I love about LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> the two things I love about Kobe – one, Kobe always going to take the last shot. Yeah. Two, one thing I love about LeBron, whatever is working, he going to keep fucking doing it. Right. And the Warriors just don't do that. And it frustrates uh, – most basketball teams don't do that. And it is so confusing to me, bro. This shit has worked time and time and time again. Why are you not just going back to it? Right. But that's why George Bulls are playing, bro. They just keep attacking. Right. Um, but... Alright, so that was a good little time on the Warriors. Oh, shit. I'm glad you said you're Kobe guy. Take the last shot. Let's talk about Tatum. <laughs> it's gotta be talked about. They're playing in a second. You know, by the time you guys listen to this, their season may be over. Shit. <laughs> yeah. And we get into a game seven. So, yeah. on the topic, because we haven't been back here since Giannis failed either. If they lose this series, are you hitting a red button in Boston? No. Oh, no. No. You were the number two seed. You came off a finals run. If you say long NBA season, they played a hundred and something games last year, and you're losing to a very, very good team. Two MVPs on the team. It's two MVPs on the team. You're losing to an excellent. That the Philly team is excellent, and they have flown under the radar. Which NBA? This is what happens with NBA teams like that that don't win. You just forget about it. Yeah. It's like the Nuggets. Like nobody cares anything about the Nuggets. We ain't even. We acting like this Warriors Lakers um, series is Western Conference Finals because yeah. like we just assume the Nuggets is gonna lose. Literally. They gonna have to shock us. The Philly was going to have to shock us to beat them. Yeah. But it's not a surprise. Just like it won't be a surprise if Denver beats LA or Warriors. It's not a failure, bro. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are twenty four and twenty five, bro. Yeah, that's what like I'm what the fuck are y'all talking about? A failure? No. Yeah. Like is it a failure? I think any championship, a team that good doesn't at least reach a conference finals is a failure. So yes, the season is a failure. Mm-hmm. But do you blow it up? Fuck no. Do you do you run it back? Absolutely. I don't see like like who in the East next year is just gonna come back and y'all gonna be like we can't beat them. That's a fact. Let me ask you this: Do you think the Jalen Brown rumors are true? One hundred percent. I don't think Jalen Brown likes being in Boston. I think Jalen Brown is super black. And 
he loves Atlanta. I think he loves he wants to be Aren't in a black city. Really black, y'all. He I wants mean, to be around black people. He wants to be in a black city. He wants black fans. He wants a culture around him. Yeah. I really think he feels that. But two hundred million dollars, my nigga, is two hundred motherfucking dollars. Two hundred million dollars. Shout out, so, shout out to all NBA teams. <laughs> so, so I don't know if we do see him leave. I don't yeah. know if we do see him really complain and ask for a trade or anything. Mm-hmm. But I do think the rumors are true. I don't think he's happy there. And I, but I, I don't think he'll ask for a trade. But I don't think he'll resign there. Right. Okay. That makes sense. So, how how do you feel about Philly though? How do well, how do you feel about Philly? And do you think it's do you think the series has it's three two they've won three games so it can't be all just Boston has played bad. Right. But how much is it is do you think Boston is kind of folding and Philly is playing good? I think Philly's played really well. I think they've executed late, but I I, I get I say Boston has lost the series more than Philly has won it. Late game execution, sense of urgency in games. You see. Shout out Joe Missoula, you see the first year coach stuff kind of come out. You know, I don't think, so I so to answer my question, I ask you, I don't think you blow it up either because I do think you've been right there in all these games. But if I'm Boston, I'm absolutely disappointed. Oh, 100%. Because I, we shouldn't be in this situation. We've already lost two games at home mm-hmm. in this year. That's terrible. In and the last, one of them without the MVP. In, la- in the last two years, you're 500 at home in the playoffs. That's, that's terrible. Atrocious, atrocious, and it's just not sustainable. The reason I would be so upset in Boston if I were a player is because we just did this shit last year. We just did this last year. Like everybody, we all thought they were gonna take the step because of what they did last year. Like, oh yeah, they learned, they made up for it. Tatum had crazy game sixes. You know, we got through it. Cool. No, the same problems are still here. The same issues, late game situations, not getting shots up. Listen. If Jason Tatum turn the corner Tyrese Maxey one more time and don't put him in the rim, bro, I might lose my mind, bro. You turn the corner on him twice in last shot situations, and both times Marcus Smart gets the ball. Why, bro? The he hit that second one. Too. <laughs> I he you know, hit that one. Too. <laughs> but I, it's I want to give Philadelphia credit, and more so. Well, not just much because he's on Philadelphia. <laughs> I want to give James Harden a lot of credit. A lot of credit. Because what he's doing, we said he could do. Yes. And we said it was 1 million percent possible yeah, that this was going to happen, bro. Because James Harden is one of the best basketball players ever. And he isn't just one of the best basketball players ever. He's shown himself to be one of the most versatile backcourt players ever. Probably Thank you. best combo guard ever. Thank you. Where he can really play. Well, he's not the shooting guard. <laughs> <laughs> but if you get, you took Harden, he said, I'm going to play shooting guard. I'm like, I'm at 35. And then when I'm older and I don't want to do that no more, I'll play point guard for the MVP. <laughs> and, and, and the best, and I think the best part about him being in Philly is that the playoff pressure of I got to have. 30 a night mm-hmm. isn't there. He don't need 30 a night. No. But listen, when I'm when you need me, when it be go that listen, I I'll give you one. 45. I man. listen, I'll 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 dip in that bag, bro. And another thing, I listen, another thing, man. I'm not gonna say Steph put out the blueprint, but a lot of people play that Boston team a little different. A lot of the people play that Boston team like, oh yeah, oh yeah, y'all got good defenders? Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Because game one, what? Nothing fancy. Pick and roll. Pick and roll. Oh, y'all can guard Harden? Let's see. Garbage. Yeah, let's see. Last possession. I saw, all right, I'll, refer, I'll shoot this bitch, Garbage. Yeah. Cook. Stop. Right. <laughs> and, and I love Harden there where, man, I don't got to win four games. Because if I win two, that's more than that. I got I got an MVP with me. I have a 30-point-per-game monster. Yes. And aside from that, we go six, seven, eight deep. The things they was asking me to do in Houston, I don't even got to do no more. I don't got to rebound. I don't got to play no defense. I don't do none of that, bro. Yeah. Just play, hit the open shots, pass to the open people. I'm I'm very happy. So, I, of course, Steph, LeBron, Jokic, players I really, really want to see win the ring, but James Harden is at the top of that list. Me too, bro. 1,000% at the top of that list. list. If, if the Warriors or Lakers go, because I want I want to see Steph for Barney five yeah. this year. If they don't happen, I want, I want the Phillies. And nobody deserves a ring more than PJ's own. Nobody. He, got one. he, got one. he was on that Bucks team. Oh, 
That's why he just bouncing around the league. Oh, okay, well, yeah, he does another. He does. I agree. He does over another. He can take them, bro. Listen, one of the hardest work interviews in the league, bro. The league has ever seen for 35, 30 million years old playing big, hitting big shots. That and one, and he would have been got to talk, got to talk to Embiid. That's that's leadership. That's bro. leadership. That's right. Uh, that, that's what Memphis need, bro. Yeah. Like, man, yes. Especially in the playoffs, bro, because those moments are tough, bro. They're tough, bro. You need superstar support. Mm-hmm. That is what superstar support is. And and you, you talk about the moments in the playoffs is, bro. Do y'all see? <laughs> y'all just. Think back to any game y'all watch with y'all team. Do y'all see how y'all be standing up in front of the TV? How y'all just sit up in y'all seat? Yeah. What the fuck you think them players feel? Bro. You think they don't feel that? You think Embiid don't feel? <sighs> it's a top ball game. It's a minute left. Oh, fuck, should I shoot this bitch? They've been doubling me all game. I'm not really comfortable. Like, all of yeah, that is they, going through their head, bro. Think about it for real. I won the MVP last night. <laughs> I'm not just 30 a game, but I just can't shoot for Al Horford. Like, they stopped doubling me and everything. This nigga Al Horford just checking me one on one. Like, he don't know what to do. Yes. Yes. Bro, this is never at because yes. it doesn't make any sense. I'm watching the game like, what does Al Horford know about him being? We don't. Like, one on one. What does he think about him being that nobody else has? And it's just the moment, right? Yeah. It's literally just the moment. But that is why you, PJ Tucker and James Harden, are so important in that locker room because James Harden took the best basketball team ever in the set. Yeah. By himself, damn near. So, one more game versus that team. That, never mind. <laughs> uh, so, Let's not hold that one. So, <laughs> so Philly. I think this is more Philly than Boston, but I think it does have a lot to do with Boston playing well. I think what I was the first thing I was going to bring up was the coach. First year coach just means a lot. If this is he made the series may be over tonight. It may be I thought it was going I thought it was going seven anyway. I still I still have Boston in the series. I still think Boston, I think Boston will win tonight and I think they can win in Boston in game seven. Um but I want I do want Philly to win tonight. But I, I do think that I do think that Boston will win this win, win the series still. But losing your coach it's just little things that even if you keep the same philosophies and you run the same right. offense, it's just little things that Emi saw on defense that Joe is just not seeing. Yeah. It's just a few things that defensively they don't look as together as they did last year. Right. A lot of people, like you said, were saying, oh, they got defensive player of the year, and Jason Taylor was sitting in the chair, Jalen Brown was sitting in the yeah. chair, I hope for great on the Rob switch. Um, it, yeah. <laughs> a lot of that was just how Emi has schemed that defense, bro. Right. And the confidence he instilled in those players. Do you listen to how Boston was talking about him and was talking after the games and how he was talking to the players? Yeah. That was a real like damn near like father like relationship in that locker right. room to them. And always Boston is always going to have this issue. I thought Ma- Malcolm Brogdon was going to solve this problem, but they don't have a point guard running offense. Yeah. And Malcolm isn't the answer. I maybe maybe after this year when he gets some summer runs in him, he yeah. sees more. Watch him go back and watch some film. He'll be more equipped to run it. But they're still relying on Marcus Smart at the end of the game to run the offense. That's never going to be nobody. I'm sorry. Um, it's just not. And I love Marcus. Smart. It's just so but frustrating to watch every game situation. I think that's they're awful. Awesome. They're all. I think, the game, I think that's bro. what I think that's another thing pissing Jalen Brown off too, bro. Because mm-hmm. these games are there to be won. Yes. And, and he's not getting the ball. And you're asking him to sacrifice. And you still lose, cause I can't do both. Yes, yes. I can't do. That's listen, so if if we are sacrificing and you know everybody got to take less shots to get this done, cool. But if I'm sacrificing and the nigga I'm sacrificing too don't even want the shot, why don't I have the ball? Come on now. And I think that's what's causing such a big problem in Boston. It's kind of a pseudo KD Westbrook thing, but the difference is the gap isn't as wide. So with the KD Westbrook thing is. Like, all right, Westbrook the dog, Westbrook the heart and soul. Everybody, everybody knows that's KD, right? You're not better than KD. Yeah. So it's really no problem. The Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown gap changes by the day, damn near. Where one damn game, there, bro. Jason Tatum's like the best player on the court, 31 in the last three quarters or 60%. And then other games, it's like, man, God, can Jalen Brown some fucking help out there? Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it's so <laughs> frustrating, especially because the way Jalen, Jason Tatum plays he can, I'll say drift. Yeah. He can drift where it'll be yes. possessions where he's not touching the ball. Drift where, okay, he's touching the ball, but it's passive, which is running the mm-hmm. offense. Where it's five, six, seven minutes, you look up, Jason Tatum hasn't took a shot. Yes. Jalen Brown on the other end is trying to get to it, trying to put pressure on the defense. So I think it's I think it's a rough situation 
personality-wise, the mesh. And Ime helped a lot with that, with everybody having those specific roles. And you talk about a lot of stuff Ime sees on defense. I don't know much about Joe, Joe Mazzulla. He was like a young guy. Ime Yadoka played 10 years in the NBA and was on a championship Spurs team, one of the best defenses ever. Played for the Spurs for three years with one of the best coaches ever, if not the best coach ever, learning at his feet. On a staff with, I think Steve Kerr was on the staff. It's been a bunch of people to get out that Spurs building. I really need to go look at the trade recently, especially with all the new coaches being hired. But I, there's just a level of knowledge, especially about the playoffs. Yes. A first year coach is not going to understand. You're not coming out on your home floor game five of a must win game and going belly up with Emei Doka. Because mm-hmm. that game was just, we didn't get off the bus. It was, bro. And you said that, and you know, you, they say it after the game, like, yeah, we just didn't have it tonight. That's not a playoff race. No. One of the dumbest things I've ever said was coaching does not matter um, that much in basketball. Yeah. And I, I said that probably three years, three, four years ago on the show, and I cannot explain how long ago <laughs> that was. Like, I have, these past two playoffs, like, I've really, like, learned the game. I've been watching a lot of J.J. Reddick, a lot of Tim Legler. Shout out J.J. Reddick, by the way. Can't, can't <laughs> coach you. Uh, so all of the basketball guys have really been paying attention to the game. I had a lot of knowledge going in. I had a lot of great basketball coaches growing up and all of that. But I, the past few years, I've really, really started to learn learn the game like like an NBA player. Damn near, like, uh, like I could go coach a team right now. Right. I'm probably really good at it. <laughs> um, so I appreciate really great coaches. But I appreciate even more coaches that can connect with players. Right. And that's what I'm talking about with Emmy is that he really connected yeah. with that team. And you see that missing in their locker room. Because like you said, Jason Fultz, like it's like it's like he don't want to be the best player all the time. Right. Like it's a third and ten. <laughs> like, yeah, the, Jason, the jig is up, my nigga. That's what yeah. I said. The jig is up. We know you love Kobe. <laughs> I gotta take your chain, fam. I ain't gonna lie. I gotta take your chain, bro. Because you playing like you a Braun disciple. And that's fine. Braun fucking might be the best player ever. We talked about it. Top three at worst. And absolute worst. But certain teams need Braun. Certain teams need Kobe. Yes. And on a team that does not execute well at the end of game situations, for you to be one of the best scorers in the NBA, you got to be the guy. It has to be on you. You're the MVP candidate. You're first team all NBA. It needs to be on you to whether or not you're scoring. It can't be on Marcus Smart to make these decisions. Yes. Like the last game where you don't get a shot up, Marcus Smart hit that shot. Yeah, maybe that shot counts if you start earlier, if you play time and score better. Because you made the right pass, but the problem is you waited too late to start, so that pass not even there. That's why he's open. You have to, especially we talked about this last week on the show, but we laughed about it like, yeah, you're 24. Nigga, you're a veteran in this league now. You've been in what four conference championships? Three or three or four. Years. Like you're a veteran, bro. <laughs> this playoff pressure, nothing new to you. You've excelled in playoff pressure plenty of times. You gotta step up to the occasion, bro. And you, you just gotta impose yourself. And I think that's what's so frustrating about for Jalen Brown, especially with Eme not there, as you said, is because there's no one to push him into the game. Yes. To make him play, make him be that dog. Yes. So there will be four, five, six minutes, man, where I'm like, fuck is Jason Tatum doing? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, MB has been great these past three games, though. He's 30 and 30 and 13, 34, 13, and then 33 and 7. So yeah. he's been great. Um, I, One thing I like about last game, he didn't do this too much, but then once I can't say much, but games, uh, I think that was four and five, three and four or something, two three pointers, three quick three pointers. He can shoot the ball, but you don't need him shooting four or five. He shot seven three-pointers last game. You don't need to have yeah, There's no reason right. he should be shooting seven. Five at the most. If you hit your first two out of three, you can shoot two more. Yeah. But no reason you should be seven if you're, seven. if you're taking seven threes, you should have five hit already. Yeah, I, I wish AD was taking seven threes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, he stopped doing all that shit, bro. Like, I was like, bro, what happened to the bad shot? You were going to tell Brown. I was like, all right, bro. <laughs> like, so... <laughs> so Let's pick these series real quick before yeah. we get into uh, Denver um, real quick. So, game six tonight, Boston, Philly, who you got? Um, well, go ahead and finish up the series. So, who you got tonight and who you got to win the series? I'm so sorry, Alicia. It's over. I think tonight is the MB night, MVP night. 
We've been waiting on it. Okay. He's we've got a couple games on it on that knee brace. He's worked himself back. I mean, he's been 30, 30, 30, and he's wasn't he's clearly not hundred percent. No. I think Embiid having the chip on his shoulder just won the MVP. He knows he's never made a conference finals. He knows the Bucks just got eliminated. So if we win this series, it's what, Miami? Mm-hmm. New York? Mm-hmm. This is the game. This is the time. We cannot go back to Boston. Yes. This is a must-win game, and I think it beats, sets that tone. I think we get 40 and 15 from tonight. Okay. I am going Boston. I hope what you said happens, but I'm going Boston, and I'm going Boston winning game seven on Saturday. Um, Denver, Phoenix tonight. We're about to talk about the series, but who do you have in the game? Well, actually, we'll say that. Since we're going to talk about it, we'll pick that one last. Uh, Lakers, Warriors tomorrow. Yeah. Game six in L.A. Who you got? Winning series, winning game tomorrow. Warriors winning, Warriors winning game six and game seven. I think one important thing that I did not bring up, I meant to say earlier, is simple enough. Steph Curry has given us a master class in every series since last year. We have not gotten it yet. Tomorrow will be a Steph Curry master class. I'm going 38, 40 plus, mm-hmm. and I'm going a very a close win by less than 10 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, Warriors win, and they go win game seven and complete the 3-1 comeback and give themselves an X out for 2016. New York, Miami is New York finishing that series. I mean, Miami finishing that series tomorrow, Miami. Yes, yes, 1,000%. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimmy Butler's going to be the best player in the court. Eric Holmes is going to be the best coach in the mm-hmm. league. I think Bam is going to do a great job taking away a lot of the easy shot for, shots for the Knicks. And I think the Knicks struggle to score. I think this has been a great season for the Knicks. You didn't expect to be here. Good work. Get it in the next season. But this series is not where the Miami Heat want to be. This is not a goal for them. No. They were just in the Eastern Conference Finals last year. They have more experience. I think they go ahead and take care of everything and – Shit, it's how they hear my play in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> God. I I think this is a bloodbath. Yeah. I think he get bad. It, it's, it's a bloodbath. It's it's a war. I do think Miami eventually pulls away though and wins this game pretty yeah. comfortably. I just think they have a better team. Um not necessarily a better I think they fit better than right. New York does. I think they have the pieces that you need to beat New York. And New York, like you said, just doesn't have the offense. Jalen Brunson playing 48 minutes back-to-back games is just not going to get it done in my opinion. Yeah, and even if it does, then you're going to lose game seven because he's going to be passed out by the And I, I'm very interested to watch if Virginia just be like, all right, enough. Enough, my nigga. Yeah. Like, I got him. Exactly. <laughs> like, and I expect that to be next game. Yep. Um, game six, Denver, Phoenix. <sighs> Who do you got to pay? I hate it had to be you for real, D-Book. I uh, hate it had to be you. Uh, uh, D-Book. D- no, and not no, even no. just for KD. Because it was KD. I was like, man, I hate it had to be KD. I hate it had to be you, D-Book. Uh, Your best playoffs to date. Mm-hmm. You shoot at 60%. Bro, he is cooking. You been hitting everything. Everything. Everything he's looking at, bro. Three you levels. Got and you know what? This will be one KD and Devin Booker. This one not on y'all. I picked, I picked Nuggets in six because I thought... KD, Devin Booker would get me too. They did. But there are things you can't overcome. And with DeAndre Ayton doing in front of the world, like I said he would do. You said it. You you can't overcome that. Nope. Because that's not winning basketball. You cannot. And Chris Paul can hurt. And Chris Paul. You are you were in a deep team to begin with. Then one Chris Paul. Seven players. One of your seven <laughs> players playing in 38 minutes. <laughs> Playing 38 minutes at 38, got hurt. <laughs> I was so bad for Chris Paul doing layers in the pregame. Like, yeah, it's over, it's nigga. Over, um, I think Yogi's had one if it was, bro. Hey, man. <laughs> it's been a nice, lovely road, gang. Um, but Landry Shaman is in y'all starting lineup <laughs> along with Cameron Payne. That oh, should and tell you all you need to know. What, what's going to be big man? Who's going to be big man now? Oh, Shock. Beast. Jock Lundell, yeah, Jock Lundell, yeah, Jock Lundell, yeah, Jock Lundell yeah, <laughs> going thirty five minutes with Jokic tonight. That's the game plan. <laughs> Good luck. Um, so yeah, I have the Nuggets. We both picked the Nuggets and since I have the Nuggets closing out tonight. Tell me out with your ribs. I need to see that trade. That's it. Like, if I'm just working, like, let me see that trade. <laughs> Them shits better be broken, my nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> out with your ribs, bruise, and a must win playoff game. That's sick. Yeah. I am hoping future Hornet. Now we have picked these series. I'm hoping what I said with the Warriors comes true. I'm hoping what I said with Philly, what Boston does not come true, and what it said comes true. I hope Philly wins tonight. Right. I hope I want Miami and New York to go seven, and Miami winning the Garden in seven. <laughs> so I'm hoping that happens. Yeah, and I pray hard. to God 
KD and Book get one more. If y'all losing seven because y'all just couldn't do it, yeah. but y'all get all three at home, like, yeah. what like, What else can I say? Bro, bro like, that's like, it's like, it's like y'all, y'all's team is not good. That's not a good basketball team. Y'all just got two insanely good basketball teams. Devin Booker, like, and, and I said this during, I forget what game it was, he was going absolutely berserk. I was like, man, is Devin Booker the best player in this team? Might be, bro. Fucking maybe. Like, like, might be, bro. bro. Like, he looks unstoppable. KD is slow now. Um, like those lower leg entries are taking a toll on his body, mm-hmm. and he's his first step isn't what it used to be. His dribble moves aren't as quick as they used to be, yeah. and his elevation on his jumper isn't what it used to be. You see a lot more harder contest on KD's jumper yeah. than you've ever seen in his life, and so yeah, I think it's a real argument to be had. Is Devin yeah. Booker better than and his aggression right? too? Yes, Devin Booker aggression, his is- aggression, and I would say part of Kevin Durant. A lot of shit Kevin Durant has been doing has looked like he's been second-guessing himself a lot, and I think that's come to playing with the new team. That's so it wouldn't surprise me yeah. if next year we be like, damn, I can't believe I even said that. Oh, yeah, but, and then they'll put you in some actual NBA players to play with. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, I love you, Josh Okogie, but, like, this is playoffs, bro. Like, I, I love you, but you shouldn't be playing 25 bro, minutes. I really can't believe DeAndre Ayton doing this in front of the world, bro. In front of the world. world. Like, I was about to ask, like, we were going to break down the series, but is it really anything more than that? Because KD and Booker show up. They, they have been incredible. KD watching. KD, it, it looks like KD is shocked he really this bad. It is, bro. It, it is. is. Have you seen him look at him? Bro, he play? is looking at this nigga like, what are you doing, doing bro? bro? Like, get back. Like, I, mean, I don't... Jokic's a lot of things. One of the best passers we've ever seen. One of the best... Maybe the best... Most efficient big man we've ever seen. The last thing he is is fast. <laughs> Why is Jokic beating you off the court? Like, those are things just, I can't accept. Just sorry, bro. Yo, it's just sorry, bro. It really no makes me bro. angry, bro. And it makes me angry. It, it, it furthers my point that low-motor, kind of skilled big men got overrated for a little bit. Because, like, yo, niggas not – those shots, nobody's won that way. Nobody's won a championship that way. With a little 15-footer from DeAndre Ayton, stop, bro. You're not Tim Duncan. You're not, yo. You're not. Like, you know the niggas who win championship? Shaq. Niggas who throw you in the rim. Shaq. Yeah, like, that's, that's who? That's it. Shaq and Hakeem. Literally. <laughs> and Shaq and, Hake- and, Kar- and Hakeem, his problem was putting niggas in the rim. Too. And was the best defender maybe literally ever. <laughs> like, 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 if, like, especially if next round we'll really see this. Either either team wins. If it's AD, listen, it's AD. We already know what type of time we're But even if it's the Warriors, bro. Jokic is not going to get five boards in one possession because the big is still standing out of bounds. Why are you out of – listen, I'm watching that video. Like, boy, I can't believe my – yo. And then he got, had a nerve to say, I don't know what y'all wanted me to do. Yeah. What do you what? mean? What? <laughs> what do you mean? No, you're not on the court. Yo, you could have been there with me. We could have watched the game together. And Monty Williams, bro, Monty Williams, hell of a coach, bro. I don't know him personally. Seemed like a great guy. You need to start cursing at DeAndre Ayton. Because if they cut to another TMT track, where it's like, lock the heck in, guys. I'm going to lose my fucking mind, bro. <laughs> like, these grown men you're talking to, bro. You can go ahead and let one out, bro. Come on, Busters. Because I know what KD thinking, not that. I Listen, I know Devin Booker is not thinking. <laughs> lock the heck in, Dad. Lock the heck in, guys. <laughs> nah, bro. Man. I can't. He, he so. talk like a rec league team, like his parents <laughs> listen to the huddle, bro. <laughs> you talk to any dumbass to go box out. <laughs> Dog, I am. Sick to my stomach. Um, I'm sick to my stomach walking. Um, watching DeAndre Ayton play like it genuinely infuriates me. It infuriates me. Um, but I do DeAndre Ayton. Who people? DeAndre Ayton is just John Collins of the West, baby. <laughs> just John Collins of the West. And seven foot John John Johnny C, man. Seven foot. And Johnny shout C. out to the nigga last year who told me he was going to be twenty and twelve on his own playoff team in Indiana. I thought I think about that tweet all the time, bro. He was like, yeah, bro, Devin Booker. He said, yeah, hey, it was helped carry them to the championship. Oh, dude, what? He helped do when did he do that? What ring was that? Nigga, I must have missed that one. Um, so before we get off of the series, yo, we have to give a lot of credit to 15, dog. <laughs> that boy different, dog. And I and I talked to you guys, if you a number one fan and you was in tune last year, I was talking about how good Jokic really is mm-hmm. and how my mom, my, it's real funny to watch somebody that, like, she, my mom watches a lot of basketball, watches more sports, because that's all that's on her house. She grew up with four men in the house. Right. So, <laughs> um, I, not grew up, though, but I was yeah. crazy. <laughs> but 
she is like, I like, what is he doing? Like, how is he doing it? How is he, he so looks good? so goofy? He yeah. looks slow. And I was like, Mom, no, you don't understand. Like, yes, he, he is so technical and genius in his footwork. Every movement matters. It's no wasted movements with Jokic. It's what I just said about Braun. Every movement matters now because of his foot. Jokic just plays basketball like that in drill. Every movement matters. You're yeah. not going to have anything where he gets out of sorts. You're not going to rush him. You're not going to speed him up. That's why KD, KD said in a press conference, he was like, I Hate, I hate watching him score because you can't do anything about it. Like you can't speed him up, you can't make him take a bad shot. It's nothing you can. It's do. it's so it's so frustrating, right? Yes. Because especially because the, the Nuggets just in general play kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, what is he doing, <laughs> bro? Like the whole world looking at Jokic, and then I look back and he spotted up in the wing, nobody by him, and he's just launching another moon ball to the rim, and it's hitting nothing but that. He went 30, 17, and 17, and then followed it up with 53 and 11, bro. <laughs> like, we're talking playoff games, bro. No, it's not February, and, bro. And the 53 was nasty. The 53 was disgusting. The Only 20 or 30, bro. Only two, three. Disgusting, the 53 bro. 53 so nasty because we're not walking to the free throw line either. We're not jumping into the defenders, bro. We, I'm giving you straight. If they call it, cool. But I'm giving you straight bro, work. You can't bro. do shit but in perspective, bro. Oh. Like, that's why I want to be mad if Denver ends up in the finals because yeah. that nigga deserves it, bro. Like, he works, bro. I love him. And that brings me to what I was going to say. Um, Our TikTok segment. <laughs> yeah, we look like a jingle for that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so... Last week, we did the 10 best players just in the playoffs. Um, I had Draymond Green on that list. It made me look good. Like, hey, shut up. Up. <laughs> shut up, um, But now we're going to do just the top five players that are playing the best in the playoffs. Right. So this has nothing to do with who's better. It's just who is playing the best right now, five players. Yeah. I will start at five. I have Joel Embiid. Okay. He missed a few games, but he's been playing great. At four, I have Anthony Davis. Mm -hmm. At three, I have Nikola Jokic. At two, I have Steph Curry. One, I have Devin Booker. I know Devin Booker is down in his series, but dude, breath is on yeah. 30 on 60%. Yeah, I don't care how much. I don't care. I don't care what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> that is crazy. crazy. Dick. And so, uh, he's their best defender now for some reason. Yo, I don't like, get it. He's their best defender now. And he's been sitting in the chair, bro. Like, yeah. Devin, those are the five best for yeah. me right now. I got the same list. I got, so, the, I got the same exact list. Devin Booker got to be one. <laughs> Steph got to be two. After that, I'm kind of not. I'm not too mad where we have Jokic. Mm -hmm. um, AD. AD. Actually, instead of fifth, instead of him being, I'm going to go Jimmy still. Okay. I'm going to still throw Jimmy there. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. That's perfect. I, I can't complain. I put I put him beat there because he's beating the better team. Yeah, but Jimmy beat Yuck. Yeah, so yeah like, and Embiid yeah. averaging 30. Like, <laughs> he's just out here. Like, yeah. So, yeah. I would, I think I'm going to go with you, bro. I think I'm going to go Jimmy. I'm going to go Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy at five. So, Jimmy, um, Jimmy, AD, Jokic, Steph, Book. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect five. Um, so, that's our playoff talk. We will be, I don't, depending on these games, mm -hmm. um, depends on when we'll come back. If everybody loses, we'll be back Sunday. If it's two game sevens on Sunday or one game seven on Sunday, we'll probably record after that. But, yeah. um, we got to talk about this, bro. So, I waited to do the foul calling thing with the Lakers and Warriors series because yeah. I just wanted to talk about the state of the NBA in general. Right. From the all NBA team to the refs to the flopping to NBA Twitter, all yeah. of it. The game's not starting on time. The, ga <laughs> the game's not starting on time, bro. So I will start with the flopping thing because I don't I don't want to stay too long in the Warriors Lakers foul call series. I'm um, foul calls in the series. The Lakers fans, I would like y'all to shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. You guys have a 60 free throw event. You have to double the amount of free throws they have the Warriors you know have taken how crazy it is. For y'all to be tied in free throws and you're upset. You're upset that both teams shot the same amount. Why? Bro, like, just shut up and watch the game, bro. It's, it's, please. It's, yeah. Like, please just be quiet and watch the game, bro. It's all you have to do. Yeah. Just be quiet and watch the game. Did they miss some foul calls last night? Yes, Absolutely. on both ends. They missed foul calls on both ends. You know why? Because they were just letting them play. Yep. That is what y'all have been calling for, what I have been calling for, what Itch has been calling for for months. Stop calling these ticky tech fouls. Every time somebody fall, don't mean it's a fucking foul, bro. Yep. Just because you're on the ground, all right, you got to the hole, and you got hit in the nose after you made the layup. They're not calling a foul on that no more, bro. It's the playoffs, bro. You on game five of the Western Conference semis with two goats on the floor, and y'all crying about fouls. Yeah. 
I understand the Warriors fans crying about fouls after game one. Bro, they shot 37 free throws or something like that. And then in game three, they did it again. I understand. Game one, I didn't, you didn't see me complain about I was like, bro, I understand why y'all mad. But, like, a lot of them shits was fouls, bro. Yeah. Like, a lot of them were foul calls. So, yeah. it was a few that were like, hmm. And that's why Steve Kerr came out of the game and was like, bro, like, they didn't do that bad of a job, bro. Like, we got to stop fouling. And you saw it the next game. What did they do? Stop fouling. Last game, what did they do? Stop fouling. It is mm-hmm. possible to defend without fouling. But y'all got to stop acting like the Warriors only won a game because of the rest, bro. Shut up. Just shut up. Oh, so, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. <laughs> Even to piggyback off that, I don't know which one of the Lakers – Twitter, and you know, big figures was like, man, jump shooting teams don't get fouled because they don't go to the rim. The entire NBA launches threes, bro. The entire NBA jacks threes. And there's still fouls called in every game somehow. And, bro, the rim is not the only place contact happens. It just doesn't make sense, bro. Especially since the Warriors are scoring more points in the paint every fucking game, damn near. The, the, it, 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 listen, on both ends, I feel like it's you gotta take it with a grain of salt. Like if you a Lakers fan, just shut the fuck up and be happy y'all getting sixty free throws tonight. Stop trying to explain to me like, oh yeah, we drive the ball forty million times a game. Because when you don't get them calls, I'm gonna say the same thing back to you. You should draw the ball more. And you are mad now because it don't make sense, bro. It don't make sense. Like. Like you happy your team is winning, you yeah. happy, and that's cool. That's, that's cool. I said about our series. I said, bro, listen, I know he played with Ron and AD. I get it. He a cool dude. That shit is loser shit. That is lame shit, bro. It's lame, like it's bro. not basketball. It's it was not. Bless Clay Hart. I thought Clay might have got thrown out when he got caught for that rip through. For real. <laughs> I thought Clay was for real for the lose his think, mind. I think that should be taken out of basketball. I think, right. I think it. It is. It's hard enough to play defense now, and you telling me. I can't just guard like this, and if they swipe through real quick, it's a foul. In bro. any like, other, they're not making a, they're not doing anything. They're just swiping the ball. In any other part of basketball, you're entitled to your defensive stance, unless someone swipes both of their arms into my arm. Like why? Like why is that a defensive foul? I'm Thirty-seven feet from the goal. I, I I literally did not move, and he swung his arms into mine, and now it's a foul. That's that's a that's a yeah. stupid call. I wish that would be right. removed, and I think they need to do what FIBA does, and they need to start punishing players and suspending players for fucking. Yeah, like they have to. Bro. So this shit is a troll. So my bro. thing is, I I don't want to. I don't even want them to find players. I think it should be a tech. I think if you get caught flopping. It's a tech. I think Falcons should be reviewable and it should be a tech. That's perfect. I think it should. And if they catch in, the thing is, because if you get hit on one, everybody will stop. Mm-hmm. That's really all it takes. Because if you watch the games, the first time Austin Reed jack his head back and don't nobody call the whistle, he keep playing. Like, yeah, okay, well, I, uh, all right. Oh, we're not getting calls that? Let's just play. But if you keep rewarding them, they're going to keep doing it. But if the first time you knock your head back, go into the lane, and nobody touch you, and you fail, and you hear a whistle, you think it's yours, and it's a tech going the other way, I guarantee you stop. Exactly. Because at the – listen, end of the day, and this is not about the Lakers. This is about – I used to say this shit about Harden. I used to say this about any flopper. You're literally just trying to cheat. That's literally – you're literally just cheating. You're literally just trying to cheat the game. You're not trying to play the game. You're literally just trying to cheat the game, bro. Right? And that's not basketball. It's not. Just get a foul the normal way. Kobe didn't flop. Kobe was – Kobe went to the line 12, 13 games a lot. He, it wasn't a lot of flopping, mm-hmm. bro. It was, a, and I don't care if you s- selling the contact and right. flopping is one thing. Yeah, if a nigga push you and you fall, cool. If if you get fouled and you fall, that's fine, bro. Like if you, I, I don't even follow embellishing a little contact. That's what I'm saying. But if there is clearly no foul, or if there's no, if there's just incidental contact, bro, play the game. Because sometimes, like, like on moving screens, that's why I don't get mad like when people fall off of screens. Because yeah. it's like, that's damn near the only way a ref can really call the moving screen. Right. Is if you kind of, like, fall or stumble or something. Yeah. So I get embellishing that. I don't be tripping yeah. on that. It be, like you said, the head jerk. Jalen Brunson does that shit a lot. Yeah. You just go to the hole and get touched and you just throw your head back. And they call that shit all year into the playoffs. And then you look up in the playoffs and what the fuck they're not calling that for? Because it's not a fucking foul, bro. Yeah. And, and if you're saying the player's not going to stop doing that, a tech... It's gonna make them stop doing it. How many take fouls did you see this year? Literally. They stop. They stop. Literally. They stop doing they, it. They was like, well, they'll still do it. No, they won't. No, they will not. They, they, they will not. Yeah, they and that's what back. that yeah. is the that is the 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 perk of having athletes just good. 
if I can't do something, I'll just figure out another way, bro. Yeah, like the thing is, you didn't get to the NBA doing that. Like, you didn't get here because Thank you were a flopper. So this is something you learn here. I know Braun want to say we don't practice flopping, but it can't be every time Austin Reeves go to the free throw line. I listen to Doris Burke give me a 45-second soliloquy about it. He used to watch James Harden growing up, trying to figure out how to draw off fouls, just like him. Okay, so too much practicing with him. Austin Reeves clearly practicing flopping. So which one is it? It's either Uchi Wally or it's one Mike. He clearly is practicing this. Y'all did a whole segment about it. He studies the film. Bro, Shut up, bro. bro. That's not that's not studying basketball. Yeah. How to jerk your head back in contact, bro. Like, get out of here, bro. And Bron said his team no flop is common. I don't give Bron, Bron got a billion dollars. I don't give a fuck what he said. That's but it, I don't care if he tell the truth or not. I don't give a fuck. But it's hilarious, nonetheless. The minute he said that, he just flops by LeBron. just came flooding through my head. Like, a bunch of hilarious Do you flops. remember the one from, like, Nazi Muhammad and the Bulls? Bro, no, no, no. When he said the back, he hit me. <laughs> bro, I don't know that nigga, bro. That's, yo, the finals used to be so funny versus the Spurs because he used to flop, and it'd be Tony Parker, so they wouldn't call it, like, nigga 5'9", 180. He can't call it, like... That's too funny. But no. another thing I wanted to talk on was the All NBA team. And I yeah. want to have a serious eye to eye with Adam Silver. I hope somebody gets this to you. Yo, you got to have somebody else vote on these awards, bro. It's it's over with, bro. You, this media shit has, this social media combined with basketball has made the media too emotional. They got crushes on these niggas. They don't like certain players. Or, uh, they dislike certain players. Bro, like, Kendrick Perkins does not like the Warriors. And you got him voting for awards that can potentially affect these people's money, bro. Yep. That's not cool, bro. These mm-hmm. awards, you got NBA insiders that work for teams voting for awards. Like, why the fuck are, is the NBA insider for the Jazz voting for an award? Yeah. Why is the NBA insider for the Warriors, for the Lakers? Why are they voting for these awards? Because they're in the media. Just because you're in the media don't mean you watch fucking basketball, dog. I 1 million percent agree with your take, especially because social media. Because I really don't want to say, I, I really don't want to say this in like a condescending way. But being a journalist used to actually be that, a job. Come on now. You actually had to be a journalist. You had to come from a journalism background, have a journalistic point of view on sports, where even if you had a bias or you had a take, you were a journalist first. Yes. That does not exist anymore. We moved from journalists in the early 2000s to analysts and personalities. Yes. That is the difference. The yes. difference is when Kobe, Trace McGrady, AI, all those were making the NBA first team, we did not know all the writers by that first name. We should not know who you're voting for three weeks ahead of time because you want to announce it on your podcast, my nigga. That is not what this is for. Thank you. This is not what it's for. These are for other people. And four or five months ago, I said, bro, every day Trey Young's been in Atlanta, he's burning money. Trey Young just put up. 26, 27, 10, 27, 27, 10, played 73 games on a playoff team and did not make the first, it didn't make any team. And, D- and Dane, and he had games on a 13th seed. Man, he sat out the last game. He didn't even play the end of the season. They sat him down. They were such For a the last team. 15 games of the season. And I'm a Luka guy. You missed the playoffs, you're not first team. You missed the playoffs, you're not first team. And that's fine. That it should be. It should be rule. How do you miss the playoffs? And the two guards at the Shea and Luca both miss the playoffs, and they're on first team All NBA. How the fuck does that happen? How the fuck does De'Aaron Fox not make first team or second team when he got the Sacramento Kings ain't made the playoffs since George Bush was president, dog? Let me let me let me add to that. <laughs> and I'm gonna steal the from first team first. He's the first player ever to win the Clutch Player of the Year award. Jerry West didn't even win the Jerry West award. <laughs> He's been the clutchest player in the NBA the whole season. How is that? Is it, how does Braun make the first team? How does Braun make it the third team with 50 something games played? He's played 56 games. How does, if you're going to give it to somebody that played 56 games on that LA team, how does AD not make it when he's been the most player all year? Exactly. And it's not it's not positional because AD's a forward, so he could have made it. Yeah. So how does AD not make it when he was the best player on the team and he played two more games than LeBron did? How? how? It's, it's, and the problem is, Fucking with niggas pockets for real. And that's why I was so confused why the 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 collective bargaining agreement came and went. Like it was nothing. Because what are y'all doing, bro? What are, y'all don't see this bread y'all throwing out the window? Disgusting. 
Jimmy Butler, I love Jimmy Butler. That nigga in the playoffs. Second team All-NBA. He didn't make the fucking All-Star game, and they were the ninth seed. How is he second team All-NBA? Even, even aside from him not making the All-Star team, he said he don't play in the playoffs. He, he, the season. Season. he said, I don't care about the regular season. He's he openly telling y'all he don't care about the regular season. I just don't get it, bro. I don't get what you want from players, bro. And John second seed, 28 points a game. <clears throat> No, no. I no. Read, y'all, y'all, the media. No. You know what? I'm, I'm going to talk to Adam Silver. Because you are playing a very dangerous game right now. With the way these players are able to communicate right to fans, a lot of Draymond podcasts, a lot of Trey Young podcasts that start next year. Shout out Trey Young. Paul George. All these, Paul George, all these NBA player podcasts. You want to know why that is? Because there's nobody in the media they want to talk to. So every year that y'all keep doing this shit, wonder why Dylan Brooks and John Morant don't do post game interviews. Why would they? Why would they? Y'all just gonna ask some questions about gossip, right? Why? Why? So you're gonna get to a point where the players and the media are going to be at odds, and that is not something the media is going to win, nor the NBA. Because bottom line, if these niggas don't want to talk to them, they won't. And it's nothing you can do. If, if, if they all stop, what are you going to do, bro? What is going to happen? You going to keep fighting? Who do give a fuck? These niggas are getting a hundred million dollar contract. Who give a fuck? And, and, and the worst part is it's your fault. It's your fault. Because you didn't step in quick enough to understand what is on the horizon where, you know, we are in sports media, but those NBA reporters, that job they are doing now is a relic of the past, bro. Those beat writers used to be important when the games weren't on TV every night. That wasn't a league pass. It wasn't a league pass. It wasn't social media for me to just pull up my phone like, wonder what he said after the game. YouTube highlights weren't on the game 10 minutes after the game. Right, like, like, everything they need to do is done automatically now. Like, realistically, in a, in a, in a dystopian world. If Adam Silver was like, fuck it, I don't want to have no media in there, and they just put a tripod up and let players walk to the back and answer questions on stream with no reporters in there. They did it during COVID. Then what? They did it during, that's how it was during COVID. Then what? Y'all need to, y'all listen, y'all really need to understand how thin of ice y'all are on in the media because they don't need y'all niggas. So when you start fucking up niggas super maxes, cause that just don't, the thing is, niggas, I like, niggas like, all he did, John Morant didn't make the All-NBA team. So he has to make it next year or he won't be eligible for super max. We all know he's getting two hundred million at one eighty. No, okay, you don't. You know, you don't think it's important now. But if he take a smaller deal and go team up with somebody because he's not on a super max, then you crying. Then is we need to change the salary cap. But it don't matter if you change the salary cap if you fucking up the all NBA awards and we don't get him at a discount anyway. If John Morant, let's say God forbid, not go with John Morant, twist his ankle midway through next season, he don't hit the games mark. He don't get a super max. And all season, he's like, mm, fuck it, I want to go play for Boston. And he can do that because they got the money because he's not on a super max now. Now it's, there's no balance in the NBA. Y'all fucking it up. The, the, the solutions, so to give Adam Silver credit, he's tried, he's really tried to fix it, bro. He took over an NBA where he was like, it's no competitive balance. He said, okay, we'll do this. We'll incentivize teams to keep their players with these giant deals. We'll bring the salary cap down. But the media is handicapping him because, bro, the solution I put in place, y'all think your podcast more important. Y'all got crushes on this thing, dog. This shit is crazy. Bro, why? Like, I don't understand. I don't understand this. And, and, and I will say, it really makes me mad because Jimmy Butler should not be made a team, and LeBron should not have made a team, and Damon should not have made a team. That's three players, bro. That's yeah. Trey Young. That's Devin Booker. That's John Moran. Bro. Yeah. Like, that's how does Devin Booker not make the All NBA team and LeBron is on it? How does Kevin Durant not make the All NBA yeah. team and LeBron is on it? The problem, is how, and that's no disrespect to LeBron, but he played fifty five games this year and, and had a losing record in the games he played. Facts. Like, come on, bro. Like, I love dude. 
Bro, probably finna win a fuck. If they win to tomorrow night, they gonna win a championship. Like he's that nigga. I want to see if the Warriors gonna win. I want to see bro win. This ain't no disrespect. It's just the facts, bro. If this was any other name in basketball, it wouldn't have fucking happened, bro. It's bullshit, bro. You can't just give him this nigga a spot on the team just because of his name, bro. That's not fair. It, it, it's not fair to a nigga who's really trying, bro. Like we we, we made the Lori marketing jokes. Lori marketing not being on the, the third team is kind of disrespectful. He tried his. They were literally at ants who played every game on a playoff team. I think he missed one game because of that ankle that he should have missed the rest of the fucking season. Like, you know, he, he played in that game. Yes, yes, yes. He didn't miss a game. He did not miss a game. Bruh, like, it's, it's very, very frustrating. It's very frustrating. And, and, and you talked about Philadelphia earlier and how Denver is like. They're, they're kind of losing teams, so we need them to wow. That is the problem with the media now is it's so important to have the first hot take in August about every player and every team that the first week of the season, I'm going to shout a couple hot takes, and these are going to be my hot takes the rest of the year. And no matter what happens, this is what I'm going to believe. And that is cool for niggas selling a podcast. But for the people who are – these are supposed to be the 15 best players in the league. How can that be when two of the niggas who's supposed to be the best didn't make the playoffs? How can Luka be a top five player in the league and you miss the playoffs? Damian Lillard hasn't been the best point guard in the league a step in his life. There's not a day he drew breath on this earth as the best player, as the best point guard. It literally never happened. How is he, how is he on this team and they lost? You were one of the worst teams in the league. Oh, you have the fourth worst record in the NBA. In the whole, the Jazz had a better record than you. Bradley Beal averaged 30 on an 8 seed and made the 13. Dog. It's his 11 seed. He didn't even make the fucking play in. Shay, I can, I'll give you a pass on Shay. Fuck it, he made the play in. Facts. He made the play in. All right, cool. Yep. Bro, what? You, can make, the, miss, you couldn't make the play in, bro. You couldn't make the play in, bro. You can get the 10 seed. Like, it's and, a different and, and, okay, if Luka was playing like insane, sure. You struggled this year. The team fell apart around you for things that you are a part of. You are a negative defender. Y'all could not defend the last three weeks of the season and miss the playoffs because of it. You were disappearing. In Kyrie led the NBA in points in the fourth quarter. Still. How are you first team? How is this? How is it adding up where players who played the entire season for better teams miss these first team awards because they don't got an Adidas deal? This shit's sick, man. It make me. It really made me mad. I I think the the, the solution is to have the coaches vote. Yeah. Um. And maybe it's not head coaches, and maybe it's just assistant coaches. But right. I think people that in the NBA and see every team play, see every player play, yeah. that is who needs to vote. Because I know Jim Jim Bourne in in Denver is right. not watching every Warriors game. He's not watching Ant play. He's not watching Warriors well, marketing play. Well, so see, bro? coach people that see them. Need to have need to have the input on who makes these All NBA teams. Was they it, need to vote for MVP. Was it as Walker well Kessler? Was that his name? Yes, yes Walker Kessler. Kessler. Like, bro, Walker Kessler wasn't rookie. Like, why is the Utah Jazz reporter voting Rookie of the Year? Like, he voted Walker Kessler. He's clearly not the Rookie of the Year. He wasn't the best rookie. He wasn't even the second best he rookie, bro. Nervous. But you know what? I'm a Jazz reporter, so you know what I did? I watched Walker Kessler improve this year, and you know he really plays deep. Nigga, Powell's the best player on that team. Putting up LeBron rookie number in 19 years old. Woo! <laughs> but hey, me mad, bro. but hey, you're a Utah Jazz reporter, so I bet you didn't say. It. I bet you didn't see much of it. Come, on. bet you didn't see much of it, other than Walker Kessler's rotation defense. Like, hey, that's that shit, fuck up. Yeah, okay. it's 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 so crazy, it's crazy, dog. And the last thing I wanted to say was to the NBA Twitter, bro. Y'all gotta grow a pair of. Come on, like y'all, y'all gotta grow up, bro. Like. Every game don't got to be a narrative. Every single game, some niggas just lose. Some niggas just lose a game yeah. and that be the end of it. It don't be foul trouble. It right. don't be, oh, this guy was hurt for two minutes or he didn't play as good. Yeah. It's, sometimes y'all can just shut the fuck up and watch a game. Do y'all even like, like seriously, do y'all like a basketball? Like I really want to know, please, if you're NBA Twitter, leave me in the comments. Do you niggas like basketball, bro? Yeah. Seriously, bro. Because where, where are all these like, 
people coming out of the woodworks. Dog, it's a video going on on Twitter right now. LeBron drove to the hole last game and elbowed Andrew Wiggins in the face. And intentionally, they didn't call the foul. No issue with it. No issue with them calling yeah. an inadvertent elbow, not a foul. Yeah. There's a video going around where they deep fake the video to take the elbow out so it looks like Andrew Wiggins is flopping. Yeah. What is wrong with Bro, you niggas, is, dog? Right. Like, seriously, think to yourself, if you read this and you did this, are you hurt this and you did that? Think to yourself, am I a man, bro? Are like, you really, are you crazy, dog? Are you cra- like, my nigga, what is wrong with y'all, bro? bro? Just watch the game and enjoy it, bro. JJ Reddick is out. Tim Legler is out. We are out. Yeah. Um, Who else does a podcast? Uh, Draymond Green. There are plenty of sources you can go to right. to learn about basketball, to really get understand basketball. Are we biased? Hell yeah, we a little bit biased right. towards the Warriors. Yeah. Is everybody else in the, in uh, sports media biased towards this being from football all the way down to hockey? Yes, you're going to have biased sports. That's what makes sports media great is the little biasness of it. But, my nigga, y'all got to – and I, you know who I blame with this? Skip Bayless, yeah. Stephen A. Smith, um, Bro, I th- I um, about this Nick shit. Wright. Yeah. All of y'all analysts that come up on this TV and y'all don't talk basketball, y'all just talk narratives. My nigga, it's game two of a – uh, with the prominent figures of this era, and y'all could be breaking down X's and O's before pregame. And the question is, what does Steph Curry have to do to overtake LeBron legacy? Yeah. Who the fuck yeah. cares? It's it's very frustrating. And I'm yeah. glad you said Skip, because I really was thinking about it, man. Like, as a basketball fan, I'm listen. If if, if Skip Bayless is a real basketball fan, I wonder does he regret it at all? <laughs> because. You can enjoy the game. You literally just can enjoy like, the game. There's no way you like watching that. You, like, stuff at 50 and you're, there's still problems with it. Like, you eat it. I hate a lot of athletes. <laughs> a lot of athletes. There's a lot of niggas I hate for real. But if they are, if it's a great performance, I will never skip past a great performance for my hate, for my narrative. Like, bro, these are the best basketball players in the world. If you can't watch these games, no matter who's on TV and enjoy it, you don't like basketball. And that is fine. If you like a specific basketball player, that's cool. I had a cousin who stopped watching basketball and Reggie Miller stopped playing. Cool. I understand. You know, some niggas just got favorite players. Black said Kobe retired tonight and watched the NBA And yo, listen, I know. Listen, that's so funny because I know he's serious, bro. Because we used to have a Kobe conversation, bro. Like, I get it, bro. But if you are, like, for the niggas that's actually watching the game, just don't talk to us. Talk to the niggas that are speaking what you are speaking. Can y'all, like, make a close friend circle on time where y'all do that and shit? Like, like and, 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 and you know what a lot of it is, too? The 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 second step niggas who are, like, 20K on Twitter, 19K on them Lakers fans. I'm like, come on, bro. Why, why, why is the tweet, another series ends with Kevon Looney swinging his arms? When has Kevon Looney hurt anyone, bro? What are you talking about? He ain't even really hit that nigga, first of all. What are you he, talking about? He really about? ain't even give him. Like, he hit some bonus harder than that. He boxed it out, bro. Like, like bro, it's, it's Kevon so Looney spent his whole game in the paint and ain't got elbow. And ain't got elbow. What? He ain't got elbow. And when he do, he get back up and keep moving like a cheat, bro. Right. But why do y'all got to cry about everything? Every it's a man's sport. It's a grown fan. You're going to say that because the women be battling. And y'all, the women don't be complaining. They be ready to fight each other. And you don't hear shit from them, bro. It's crazy because women's basketball is so much more physical. physical. So much more physical. And you don't see nobody complaining. You don't see no, no media, no women in the media complaining no. about it. They just go to war about it. Yeah. Talk all the shit in the world. Yeah. Talk crazy on the court and go home about it like it ain't shit. Y'all get to complain. And I'm not even talking about NBA players do that. It's yeah. these beat reporters, like you said, the journalists that aren't journalists, yeah. the fans. It is getting so sick and tiring. Mm-hmm. I seriously deleted, I deleted Twitter Tuesday night. I said I can't do this shit no more because... All of my Twitter is a for you page. It's a for you page, and it's just tweet after tweet complaining about this, complaining about that, complaining about. And I'm talking about every yeah, fucking bro. series. Like have, you, like, like, have you think ever watched a game start to finish and was like, man, that was a good game. That was a great game. Like, <laughs> bro, I love the words. I love stuff that's in my heart. This series really, like, this series is like, like if. Can't be mad. Like you must have LeBron at eighty. Oh my god. So I'm not tripping. Like how I told you, I was tripping last series and I was stressed. Like I'm not. I'm not watching the series like that because it's LeBron and AD. I watched Game Four. Watched us lose Game Four, and I got up. I went to talk to him. I said, "Man, that was a hell of a game." Yo, great. Game. Um, it was a, such a good basketball game. I can't really be mad. Like y'all, y'all don't like basketball. Y'all don't like sports. Y'all just like the drama. Y'all like the narratives. Y'all like to get tweets off. And I just want y'all to stop.
Please take that shit somewhere else, bro. This shit is serious. And last thing else. before we go, last thing before we go is y'all niggas got to stop with the Steph can't run the pick and roll the whole game shit. I'll let a couple of y'all get that shit off. Y'all niggas got to stop. Stop telling me the best condition athlete to ever walk on the court isn't in as good a shape as Luka Doncic and James Harden were to run the pick and roll the whole game. I'm, it's just, it just, it just don't make sense, bro. It just don't make sense. All right. I, we're going to switch real yeah. quick. Um, that was our playoff talk. We'll be back with that. Uh, we'll be back. With, like I said, we'll figure that out. It doesn't matter. Y'all, this yeah. is not live. <laughs> so real quick, to I just want to touch on music for a second. Um, Jack Harlow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir, bro. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I love that album. That's exactly what you needed. That's what we said. do. Said rap. Or just yeah. rap. You can really rap. Bring that semi no percentage. No cool. <laughs> I just want to respect for it. Rap, <laughs> rap, bro. And that's exactly what he did. I think that's a perfect album. 10 out of 10. Um, Not a 10 out of 10 album, but he went 10 for 10. For him, um, yeah. Yes, for him, that's a 10 out of 10 album. I have no complaints from that album. The only song I would complain about is Gang, Gang, Gang. And you delivered on the concept. The lyrics just weren't all the way there. And that happens on some songs. So it's okay. I love that. I do love the concept of the songs and what you're trying to bring to light. Um, yeah. Denver stand out of the uh, stand out of the album to me. Oh, that yeah. song is incredible. I've been listening to that since it came out. Um, and it's a real easy listen. I'm just 24 minutes nice. short album. Um, like I said, clap. It's damn near an EP, but yeah. um, uh, love that from Jack Harlow. And staying in rap, Missy Elliott. Yeah. Inducted first uh, female rapper inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, well fucking deserved. Missy Elliott. You see Missy Elliott all throughout music to this day. You see Missy Elliott and Lil Wayne. Um, you hear Missy Nicki Elliott Minaj. and Nicki Minaj, Young Thug. Mm -hmm. You see these all these ad libs, crazy ad libs, these mm -hmm. random sounds, amigos. This is Miss Cardi, Cardi, Cardi B, Cardi B, Fat, any of them women dressing crazy in these yes. weird yes. music videos. Missy Elliott, man, yep. trendsetter, pioneer, all of that, and. Incredible music, and she was at Usher's Love for the Friend Fest and put on a fucking show. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Missy Elliott. Uh, interview came out with Lil Wayne. I haven't watched it, but it's yeah. great. Um, I heard. Um, lastly, <laughs> and I don't know if you might know, I'm about to do this. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. That album's crazy. That album that is, is crazy. That album is crazy. Bro, I have me and Taylor have not turned that album. Shout out, Miley I know, Cyrus. I know the song from that. <laughs> and I can give you the order of that. That's album, what it is, bro. Yeah. So on um, this show, we take pride in listening to all genres of music. Yeah. So we don't discriminate. We don't just talk about rap. Mm -hmm. We talk about everything. There is no problem if you do just talk about rap and you only listen to rap. I don't care. Rap is the shit and it's the best genre. But bye. I love pop music. Some niggas, um, some niggas be sad. Uh, bro, I be sad. Mm -hmm. I be in different moods. Sometimes I just want to hear music. And I listen Sometimes to it's 80 degrees. I just want to hear some nice music. Exactly. And, just relax. and, some, and some, I don't think people realize like how much music we probably really listen to. Like We listen to way more music than the average person. It, yeah. I wake up and just go turn my speaker off. I might get to it. Like, yeah. So um, Miley Cyrus' album is phenomenal. It's one of the best pop albums I've heard in the last five years. Yeah. It is a phenomenal from start to finish. Um, Flowers, Jaded, uh, Wonder Woman. It's a, it's some crazy. Last, music. last person will clap up before we leave. Conway, oh God, do it. Yes, sir. That was my last one. Yeah, boy, you can rap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah boy, you, you can rap. That shit off, bro. You can rap. Yeah, bro. Conway, get that um, shit off. And these breakdowns are quick because we gotta go. But um, I just wanted to give up a clap. I don't like shitting on people's art, so we don't talk about bad albums. If yeah, we no. don't miss your album, that either means we didn't listen to it or we just didn't like it, and we don't want to talk bad about you. So everything, um, everything that I don't, I don't think we're missing anything recently that has dropped. Um, I think that's everything. Mm -hmm. Um. I want to give a shout out to my dog Ammo. He just dropped the project, um, New Era. It's oh, well, available yeah, on all platforms. It's a little EP. Yeah. I think about ten songs. It's really good. Um, Baby Rose is a R and B singer um, from the UK. She is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this is just some old music. I am now into the Gap Band with Charlie Wilson. Oh, oh wow, man! Really? Oh yeah. wow, you love it. So that is all I got for today. Um, I promise we're gonna do a Snowfall review. I just want to have a good. 30, 40 minutes to yeah, talk about right, it. Yeah. So I don't want to rush that. So yeah. we will get to that when these playoffs die down a little yeah. bit. Um, so y'all watch Snowfall. Keep it locked. And I think that's you good. You go, got anything else? Go see Guardians. Go go see Guardians. I do not want y'all to get that movie spoiled. One of the best MC movies. Yeah. One of the best superhero movies I've ever seen in my life. Um, so yeah. Uh, thank y'all for joining. Like we said, links to um, all our socials are in the bio. And twins, we'll see you when we see you. See you later. Time. Hi.